Okay guys, real quick intro here. So I'm at a brand new airport for us. Um, but the story behind it is this airport and another airport, um, both legal for PPG, we had called and gotten um, denied permission to fly here. Um, I, I called a couple years ago and, and wasn't allowed to fly. So called yesterday and was granted permission to fly at both airports. So I'm gonna tell you guys what I did to do that um, and why we choose to fly to airports in South Carolina or why we have to fly to airports in South Carolina, at least this area I'm in. And uh, some tips and tricks if you guys um, are losing LZs because I just doubled my LZs in 24 hours. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's get ready. I gotta get all my stuff together and uh, get ready to launch and we'll talk about the rest in the air. Peace. All right. Lee, Adam, getting ready to set up. And uh, I'm ready to go here with the Gin Carve again. Thanks to Matt Minyard on that. I forgot my chase cam, so camera two will be my foot cam. A new place to fly. Let me get these trimmers in to lower the motor RPM just a tad. All right, check the traffic. Okay, I only have one battery today, so oh, let me get my foot cam going. All right, so I only have one battery today, so I'm gonna get right into it. We have two main airports that we can fly out of. I guess I should explain why we have to fly to airports in South Carolina. So, let me get some altitude to tell you that. Okay, well it's hazy up here, so this is about as high as I'm gonna get where you really don't see anything, but have a look. Have a look. What do you see? What do you see? All right, I'll give you the answer. It's trees, you see trees. And that's all we have here is trees. Okay, so it's trees, and then any open area is either being farmed or is private land. Like this field, hey, nice field. No, nope, that's somebody's property. You cannot fly off that. All those cool parks you see in Tucker's videos and other people's videos where they're launching from a nice park and it's so nice, that does not exist in this area that we live. It doesn't exist. Okay, so your options for PPG, okay, well, you're in South Carolina, Tom. Why don't you go to the beach? Well, the beaches don't allow it. You call every single beach, talk to anyone, they say, no, you're not allowed to fly that paramotor off of this beach. Okay, now we still do it from time to time. We do it very rarely and we kind of go in and we pay our fee to park and they see the paramotor in the back of the truck and they give us a look and they're like, okay, have fun. Um, knowing that it's illegal and knowing that they're, you know, we're not causing any harm so they're not enforcing the rule. But all it takes is for one person to screw up and then they're like, well, you know what? We're done and we're gonna start enforcing that rule. So you can't fly on the beach. So where does that leave us? That leaves us at airports. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, paramotors, we can't take off from all airports. Pretty much just untowered airports with, uh, a, you know, no, no airspace restrictions. We still have to follow our airspace guidelines. And if that airport reaches that and it's a publicly owned airport, we're allowed to fly there. That being said, when you call airports or try to get permission, uh, a lot of times you get denied and they have no right to deny you that because it's publicly owned and um, you as an ultralight pilot, paramotor, uh, have every right to use that airport. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs if there's like some safety regulations that they could impose on you or something like that, they, they, maybe, but I, I still don't think so. I still think they have to accommodate you. Now, it gets trickier if you're you know, use a trike and you're like, hey, we want to use the runway. It's like, well, you know, that's that's asking a lot. But for foot launch, I mean, look at how much space there is here, right? I mean, this is so much space. We just launched in 30 feet off the edge of that uh, ramp and there's nobody on that ramp. It was literally perfect. And we're here in the morning. There's, there's not, no one else at the airport, it's just us. So it doesn't take much for a foot launch pilot. 
So our only option in South Carolina is to fly out of those types of airports. Uh, we have two main airports that we fly out of here. Um, one of them is a little busier, but closer to my house. So we, we utilize that airport for days that it's going to be like one or two guys. And, you know, we're, we're, we're not wanting to practice touch and goes or things like that because it's a launch and leave kind of agreement we have with them, right? We come there, small footprint, don't bug anybody, launch, get out of there, come back and land, and that's it. Now, there's another airport that's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. There's like two airplanes on the field. Uh, we know both the owners. We like them, they like us, but it's kind of far away. And you can imagine flying out of that one airport all the time, it gets boring. That's where we were at yesterday. We were talking about going to fly. I said, man, I'm bored of flying out of these airports. I need to go somewhere else. So I decided to call these other two airports that are near us and have denied me in the past. Well, yesterday I figured why not try again? So I called again yesterday and surprisingly, both of them agreed and gave me gate codes. So here's the tips that I'll give you. First of all, be nice. Don't call them with an attitude like, you know, it's, it's I have every right to be there. Uh, it's publicly funded. You hear a lot of these guys throwing that in the airport manager's face. And bottom line, it's just gonna piss them off. And even though they legally can't tell you no, they could just tell you no and kick you out. And then you have to go get the police involved or you have, the police don't know the FAR regulations. <laughs> you know, it's just a huge nightmare. You have, you have to go through a huge process and then you're, guess what, you're still not flying. And the airport manager knows that. So if you're a dick, he's gonna be a dick to you. And that's, I mean, that's bottom line. Second piece of advice, know your shit. Know your FAR 103 laws and know the airport operation laws. Know pattern altitudes, know uh, the approach plate if you can. If you know everything about that airport, research it so that when you call the airport manager, he's like, you know, oh, this this guy knows what he's talking about. He's, he's not some hooligan coming here wanting to, you know, buzz around the airport. And um, he, it gives him a little more confidence to tell you yes. Number three is have a plan. So what, what are you going to be asking? So for me, I call, I tell him what a paramotor is. I say what we're looking to do. We're looking to use the airport as an LZ. So typically, we launch, we leave. I tell him about other airports that we have this agreement with, one of which is a pretty busy airport. So when I tell him this particular airport, he's like, oh, you fly to that airport and have no problems? I said, yeah, we've been flying there for four years, no problems. Um, here's what we do to keep safe there. Tell him all that. And then that gives him further confidence, him or her further confidence to um, give you permission and gate codes and, and his blessing. And then number four, this is for after you get access to the airport. After you get access to the airport, don't be an idiot. Do what you said, be smart, launch and leave if that's the agreement. Um, and you know, if you show up to the airport one day and there is just a ton of traffic, maybe that's not a good day to fly. So I think that pretty much covers it. The rest of it is common sense. I mean, if you're completely ignorant to airport operations, maybe you should not be flying out of an airport yet. Um, but these are things you can learn on YouTube in a day. I mean, you could get, you could familiarize yourself with pattern altitudes, how aircraft operate at airports, um, things like that. Now, the, I guess one thing I didn't mention is a radio. A lot of people will tell you fly with a radio out of an airport. Now, I'm not suggesting that because I don't know the legality of that. I don't know if we're technically allowed without some type of license or something to talk on airband radios. Now, I do it because I've been asked to do it before, but in my experience, at least at the airports that I have flown out of, it's not been necessary. Like today, I monitored the air traffic for, I don't know, 40 minutes on the ground was getting ready. I didn't hear anybody. I know where the pattern is. I know where the pattern altitude is. I spoke to the airport manager yesterday. He said that he would let other aircraft know that there's paramotor operations today. So I feel confident I don't need to fly with that extra piece of equipment today. And I can listen to music because it's one or the other for me. <laughs> the way my helmet is set up. All right, guys, that's it for my tips and tricks for gaining new LZs that are airports. All right, I'm going to stop talking. This video is probably long, just me talking. But uh, yeah, we're going to enjoy this flight. See you guys. Bye.
gigantic dragonfly right to the dome. Okay. Careful when foot dragging near a lake because of dragonflies. Tip number six. guys that's all I got for you today hope you enjoyed that one hope it helps some of you guys out with some future LZs or LZ preservation uh, don't forget about the paramotor training giveaway head over to flyppg.com for details on that and uh, don't forget to like subscribe follow me on Instagram all that jazz thanks for watching see you next time bye